It's happening. Signs of the last day's prophecies are happening, just like the Bible said, as events and conditions in the world are connecting with the biblical prophecies as signs revealing we are nearing the end of this age. And if you believe in Bible prophecy and appreciate biblical prophecy commentary, please support this ministry and channel. Click the subscribe button on this channel. Click the bell and get all notifications for our live streams and videos. Then share this channel, its videos and live stream events. Click the thumbs up on videos and place a positive comment. For the signs of the last day's prophecies are increasingly manifesting in the world now, indicating the appearance of Jesus Christ for his church is nearing. The prophecies foretell that in the last days, there will be a religious and political government from the old Roman Empire that will facilitate a Mideast peace agreement in the last days. And the religious and political government from Rome out of the old Roman Empire is working now in the Mideast to facilitate that agreement to happen. <clears throat> which that agreement is foretold to be the prophetic, decisive, pivotal, tipping point, the prophecies say, that starts the final seven years of the world's apocalyptic history leading up to Armageddon. The prophecy describes in Revelation chapter 17 that the Holy Spirit showed a woman and she was sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the prophecy went on to describe the woman riding the beast as the great harlot who sits on many waters that is in relationships with the kings of the earth. And the prophecy describes her as being arrayed in purple, and scarlet, and adorned with gold, and precious stones, and pearls, and having in her hand a golden cup that is full of her abominations. And it also says that she is drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus Christ. As the prophecy here is describing, a worldwide religious and political government organization that is unfaithful to the biblical teachings of Jesus Christ, that dresses in purple and scarlet and adorned with precious stones, who uses the golden chalice or cup, who throughout history has killed the saints as martyrs for Jesus, and has worldwide influence with the leaders of the nations of the earth. And the only religious political organization in the world that fits this prophetic profile is the Roman Vatican City and its city nation state government, which is that great city, the prophecy goes on to say. It is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth as the Roman church that came directly out of the Roman Empire. And the prophecy in the book of Daniel, chapter 9, verse 26 and verse 27, foretells that it is from the Romans who come from Rome and destroyed Jerusalem and the Jewish temple previously that now in the last days there will come a prince from these people of Rome who will make a covenant or agreement in the Mideast with many, as foretold in the Daniel chapter 9 prophecy. And while many ill-advisedly have been excited about a long-awaited U.S. administration Mideast peace plan, who, by the way, is totally, totally, biblically unqualified to achieve that. Instead, the religious political organization that is the direct descendant of the Roman Empire in the world has been making the real moves recently in the Middle East 
on facilitating the bringing about of a peace agreement between Israel and its Arab neighbors. I just recently, in our last live stream, talked about how that the nation of Israel and the Arab nations around them, how they have on their own been moving forward and working toward making an, an, an agreement, a covenant of non-aggression, of peace in the Middle East. And I, in my view, think that one of the main driving reasons why Israel and the Arab nations have been doing this is because of the influence of this political, religious Vatican organization in the Middle East. As the Roman Vatican, the most influential political world power that receives and sends ambassadors to all the capitals of the world nations. The Roman Vatican has been having meetings with the Israelis and the Arabs. In recent times, the Vatican has been the main force in the Middle East that has been moving on Middle East peace. In 2014, Pope Francis made a historic visit to Israel, where he also visited Jordan and the Palestinian territories, where the Roman Pope, while there in the Middle East, invited then Israeli Prime Minister Paris and Abbas of the Palestinians. He invited them to the Roman Vatican for a meeting and to pray for peace. And when those three later met at the Vatican, the Roman Pope Francis said, I hope that this meeting will be a journey toward what joins us to overcome what divides us. Then, in 2015, the Palestinians Abbas again visited Pope Francis at the Vatican. And during the visit, the Roman Pope called Abbas an angel of peace. As Palestinian and Vatican officials met in meetings during that visit, and out of those meetings, they made a historic joint treaty agreement, which served as the Vatican's formal recognition of the state of Palestine. Then afterwards, in 2017, <clears throat> Abbas again visited the Vatican, where he formally inaugurated with the Roman Pope the opening of the State of Palestine embassy to the Vatican. So now, Israel and the Palestinians both are recognized as nation states with formal relationships with the religious, political organization that dominates nations worldwide, which is the Roman Vatican. Then in 2018 came the move by the President of the United States to officially move the United States Embassy in Israel from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. So to mark the 70th anniversary of the creation of the State of Israel, recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. But then afterwards, that event, the Palestinians broke off relations with the U.S. <clears throat> and declared they would no longer work with the Americans for Middle East peace. But the Vatican was undeterred in continuing the Middle East peace process as the Roman Pope in his last Christmas Day speech 10 months ago at the end of 2018 called for renewed Israeli-Palestinian peace talks so to put an end to the over 70 years of conflict. And immediately, the Palestinian Authority President Abbas responded and said he welcomed resuming dialogue with the Israeli government in order to achieve peace. And now, this month, as reported by the Jerusalem Post, the Roman Vatican has just sent one of its highest-ranking Vatican diplomats 
to meet both with the Israelis and the Arabs to continue pushing forward the Middle East peace process. Cardinal Leonardo Sandri from the Roman Vatican, one of the highest ranking Vatican diplomats, came to Jerusalem and he met there with Israel's President Rivlin at the President's residence in Jerusalem. Sandri, who is the prefect of the Congregations for the Oriental Roman Churches, came with a delegation including Franciscan priests as well as the Papal Nuncio and the Custos of the Holy Land. And in the meeting, Israeli President Revlin, notice this, in the meeting with the Roman Vatican Cardinal, Israeli President Rivlin, who has in the past met with Pope Francis as well, Rivlin spoke about the efforts being made by the Vatican to bring about a cessation of hostilities in the Middle East in general and between Israel and the Palestinians in particular. And Rivlin told the Roman Vatican Cardinal Sandri that Israel wants to, and I quote, share the land and find a way to live together with the Palestinians. And Rivlin told Sandri that he knows the Vatican is working to bring about the solution to the century-old issue as Rivlin emphasized the need to build more understanding between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And Cardinal Sandri said in that meeting that it was the 25th anniversary of the establishment of the diplomatic relations between the Vatican and Israel and went on to say that the Roman Vatican wanted the relationship between the Vatican and Israel to serve as a bridge to resolving the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and bringing about Middle East peace. That is just, all of this is so prophetic. All of this is just flashing signs of the last day's prophecies. But that's not all. Then the Roman Vatican Cardinal, he left the residence of the Israeli president. And then the Cardinal from the Vatican then went and met with Palestinian and Jordanian officials at the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount, where the Arab officials praised the visit by the Vatican's cardinal for Eastern churches, saying that the meeting was historic. The Roman Vatican's delegation was welcomed by the Director General of Jerusalem's Waqf Department, Sheikh Azam Khatib, and also by Wasfi Kalini, director of the Royal Hashemite Fund for the Restoration of Al-Aqsa, and then also various members of the Waqf Council and an assortment of Palestinian leaders. And then a joint message from the Vatican meeting with these Muslim leaders on the Temple Mount was also issued, affirming all the participants' support of the Omari Pact, also support for the Hashemite custodianship of King Abdullah over the holy sites, rejection of attempts to change the status quo, and it also stated that there is no alternative to the two-state solution with East Jerusalem as the capital of the Palestinian state to where the holy city would be divided as prophesied. There is no other religious, political organization on the earth Who could have pulled this off? Were they moved between the Israelis and the Arabs and Jerusalem like this so easily? And that also influences them to make the statements such as they are making, such as Israel, Israel's president, saying that they want to share the land with the Palestinians. And there is no other religious political government who recognizes both Israel and the Palestinians as nation states having received both their ambassadors. The bottom line is is that there is no other religious political organization that has done more in recent years to move forward the Middle East to the prophesied peace agreement covenant of Daniel the ninth chapter. 
the signs are showing without equivocation that the Mideast piece of the Daniel chapter 9 prophecy is being moved forward by one of the biblically prophesied participants of the Revelation chapter 17 prophecy of the Roman Vatican of Rome from the Roman Empire as prophesied in Daniel chapter 9 and connecting with Revelation chapter 17. The prophetic biblical parties to the last days prophecies as Israel, the Palestinians, the Arab states, the Roman Vatican are being moved into place and things could begin to happen rather quickly for the prophesied Mideast agreement. All it will take is when the right Israeli government comes to power along with the world government leader called the beast who is full of blasphemy whom the woman, the great harlot, will sit over his rise to power. And then Israel and this Antichrist will make a covenant that begins the time of Jacob's trouble that will begin the final seven years of the world's apocalyptic history leading to Armageddon. We can clearly see the signs building in these events that are linking prophetically to the scriptures, bringing about the last day's prophesied environment of prophecy that will bring in the end of days. These events and conditions happening are signs pointing to the nearing fulfillment of the last day's prophecies. At the end of this age, revealing how near and how much we need to prepare for the nearing appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church. If you haven't been, it's time to be born again spiritually into the kingdom of God. As Jesus said, you must in John chapter 3. And Jesus' apostles who were authorized in Matthew 16 described how in Acts chapter 2. It's time to get ready. It's time to be expecting the Lord Jesus Christ and walking with him every day in the Holy Spirit, keeping our eyes in the Word of God as our eyes also look and watch the signs of the last days happen, and as our heads are lifting up, looking for the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, God be praised. Jesus is coming. For those that are his believers, take hope, have faith, Oh, hallelujah. Believe. The word of God is true. The signs of the last days are happening, just like the Bible said. Let us be prepared. Let us be faithful to watch and pray for the coming of the Lord. You can always find more about the signs of the last days prophecies and be informed for the coming of Jesus by this channel, and also going to signsofthelastdays.org website with all of its prophecy information. And while at the website, signsofthelastdays.org, you can securely give a donation, no matter the amount, as a tax-deductible offering. As you join and become a part of this ministry, and you support sharing the signs of the last days prophecies, as we are nearing midnight, in the last days, as Jesus described in Matthew chapter 25, after he had described the signs of the last days in Matthew chapter 24. And together, we must make the midnight cry. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Get ready to go out to meet him. Thank you for viewing. And thanks to all of our partners in Prophecy who are giving an offering each month as a part of this ministry making this ministry possible to share the signs of Jesus' coming. We're not looking for the end, but we're looking for the beginning of our wonderful new future in Jesus Christ. And we're looking forward to seeing you this Sunday evening at 8 p.m. for the Watch and Pray live stream, where we watch more signs of the last days happening and pray for your prayer requests and are encouraged by your testimonies as we get ready for the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. God keep you. In Jesus' name.
Draw 